All right, this is what we're working on. It is a River Rossi Hudson. Um, this is one of the most difficult things. I haven't, I haven't had any videos in like a week because I've been working on this. It is very difficult to work on. It has the XL Systems uh, Steam sound decoder. You have to turn your layout to down to 16 volts in order to use this so that you don't burn it up. And normally we're at 18 volts, but we got it to work. And we replaced the original, the speaker that it comes with it. We, we kept the speaker, but we made a subwoofer and we loaded this thing down with lead. This build consumes a ton of resources. It consumes all kinds of resources, wire, disconnects, time. It took a week to do this. There's almost a pound of lead in here to make it work. The weakness is that this locomotive picks up power. Red rail is only in the locomotive and only picks it from this side from one, two, no, no, two of these wheels and sort of two of these wheels. And then the black rail power is picked up from four of the six axles on one side in the back. And if you were gonna do this, despite everything I show you, you've got to make it so this tender picks up power from both sides. It'll just be way more reliable. Right now it's not, it, it's very touchy on picking up power. And one, I'm gonna give you a little demonstration, a little teaser. The sound though, with the subwoofer that we made, is so cool. It is, listen to this. Is that a whistle or what? I don't even have the volume maxed. It ended up getting a Rev 1 motor. The motor that was in here was a true 12 volt DC and it actually flamed out on me while I was testing it on the bench. The motor it just it suddenly just flamed up and, and crapped out. It, well, it was a crappy motor, but now it's got a Rev 1 in it. And uh, it's pretty sweet. Rev 1's got excellent slow speed. But because this thing uses back EMF and was not really meant for a motor that accurate, this the chuff gets going super fast despite how slow you're going. Dang, that speaker is so loud it doesn't even cause hearing damage. That's our subwoofer that we made. So I'm going to show you some of the things I did to make this work. Not everything, because this was a totally experimental build. Dang, I love that whistle. a lot. It didn't trip the breaker, nothing, everything's still on. But the power pickup on this thing is very intermittent. And unfortunately, where it's going, it'll be just fine. It's going to pull a passenger train forwards only. All right, so I've been videoing this thing for a week. And if you want, just skip to the last, like, I don't know, last, like, 10 minutes, and and I'll demonstrate some more stuff. I have to say that I am really impressed with the XL Systems sound decoder. I wish it was 18 volts. I need to call them and find out, because for 35 bucks, dang, good decoder. It has so many cool functions. It's hard to program with JMRI, but not impossible. And I had to use my DR5000 base station, which can program any CB. And 
we got this thing working and I got to experiment with sounds and stuff. It was kind of fun. So if you don't want to see all the in-between stuff, just go ahead and skip to like the last 10 minutes and there, I'll have more demonstration. Okay, working on the Hudson here. Now, I've got all of this cleaned up. Each wheel has got to be cleaned. First, I put it in the ultrasonic, clean it that way. But then, you've got to have to come back with a wire brush, and you have to clean each wheel. As long as you get the worm out, you can rotate them around like this. Then, you need to lift them up one at a time and get in here, in here file just a little bit. Make sure they're clean. Put them back in and to quarter. You just set them straight across and pull. There, quarter. Okay, you got to clean these axles. And then as you rotate them around, you'll be able to clean them. This is this one takes a, takes a while. This thing has got to be cleaned also. It's copper. So once it's cleaned, you'll have to ox guard it. This bottom plate, I went ahead and I cleaned it, and then I painted the outside and sealed it, and then the inside is totally clean and I ox guarded it. And that is going to fit on here. I'm gonna have to go through yet with my little file and clean these ridges. So that th this thing also, it, um, it helps with conductivity because it's gonna touch the conductive part. Remember, this thing picks up power only from one side. Now, the tender. When you get the tender apart, one of the things you're gonna have to do is very carefully, you will need to take it apart and, and clean the trucks and things and the wheels and stuff and gauge them. And then you should take, you should have a picture before you start this. I have it facing where I can read the words. When I put, there's numbers under here. See that? I know that those go here. And I know that there's two holes. The second one goes to the inside. And it's only going to fit one way. Then there's a tab on this wiper that wipes the outside two axles. So those axles got to get ox guarded. And the wheels on one side got to get ox guarded. This little tab is to the inside, and it actually fits in the inside hole. So that when you put it on there, that tab is inside, like that. That's how, that's how the wiper goes. And then there's the, uh, this is what this pin holds them in place, and it is spring-loaded. Don't lose those springs. Those are just a couple of tips on doing this. Make sure you gauge everything. Get out all the con conductive parts nice and clean. And then, because we're putting in a sound decoder, this is what's inside the tender. We're gonna have to improve on this because we need room for that speaker. All right, let's keep going. Okay, we got the truck, or the tender, started back together. So I replaced this little wire with a larger uh, copper jewelry wire. I'm not going to solder this last piece on until I get everything together here. Now I'll tell you what, doing this can be very frustrating. Um, this screw here is spring loaded when, when you're putting on the truck. What you're going to have to do a few times is you're going to have to put this in here to pin one of to screw into one of these plates without the spring. You just put it in, screw it in place to hold the plate while you set up your wire. Now, if you're going to use uh, plain wire, you know, electrical wire, um, you don't really need to do that. You could do it after the fact. But I like this heavy wire for the, because we're going to be putting, you know, a decoder in here. We got to put some PC boards and a speaker and stuff. So this makes it nice and clean. Here's the frustrating thing about these trucks. Okay, and I kind of did. 
as I, I'm telling you what's frustrating after I've got it. Um, to get the first one in, I strongly recommend you just put one of these screws in and pin this plate in. Okay, then put that truck in because it's going to be way easier if, if, if you don't have to hold them while you're trying to put in a spring-loaded screw. Okay, so now remember the way these go is going to be like that with that little tab to the inside. Make sure you're lined up on the right way. These plates here are what pick up power from the wheels. So they all go on one side and it happens to be the red rail side. Wait, no, it happens to be the black rail side. That's why I'm doing it this way. And I know that because I took a picture of it. Okay, then we're going to put this spring in here. And we have done ox guard on all the contact parts and the wheels. And now we're going to line this up. And hopefully back up a little bit so I can actually do this. Okay, so I'm going to take my screwdriver here and hold it. And I'm going to go on this side. Get that guy in there. Lined up over the hole. Yep. Let's get him in there. And hopefully I got it. Nope, nope, don't have it. We've got to get him lined up over that screw and that screw okay the threading is in the metal part the threading is not in the uh, plastic underframe so now if I got him lined up if I got him and I'm holding him maybe I got him there very nice ooh this tender is getting oh and guess what fell out now I gotta start over and do the same thing again but that's how you do it. I can put that guy back in. And then we'll be ready to ready to roll on to the next part. Okay, here we go. Here's our basic setup for the tender. Everything's wired. I took some pieces of lead, cut them off, so that I could make an insulated platform. Here for the decoder. And here for our PC board. And that PC board has got... This is a nine pin, so it's got nine spots to put wires on. Because we're going to have to make disconnects and stuff for this. Then this speaker, which is on here, on the disconnect, is going to go up in top of the tender shell. But we're going to we're going to change this this cap that's on here. We're going to we're going to make a new speaker cabinet for it. And we'll 3D print that, I think. And that ought to do the trick. We should have something pretty pretty nice here. Hopefully, this wiring is going to be pretty simple. The only thing I'm concerned about is the disconnects. Because we're going to need, if we have a headlight, that's two wires. The motor is two wires. That's four. And then, we got to bring the power from here... That it picks up from the rail. We got to bring that back into here. That's five wires. So we're going to need probably a three pin and a two pin. And hopefully that will set us right up. All right, let's take a look at our progress so far. Okay, so here is the setup in the tender. Now, what we got here is a big speaker now. It's a big old cabinet. The speaker's on top. This is basically a sealed subwoofer. Plugs in here. And we made it so that uh, you can take this, you can open this. But when you close it and you're not going to open it again, you need to put this pin in and then it bolts right here. So we're in the testing part right now. Now, this used to bring power to the motor. It, it no longer does that because we don't need it. Okay, so here is a nine section PC board. Got all the decoder harness wired up to it. 
This here is, is for disconnects, which I got right here. This is a light, this is the headlight, and here is the power from the front, which is red rail, and the power back to the motor. And then plug in with a little, couple little connectors here. These guys. All right, then up here in the locomotive, we've got one, two pads for the light, motor, and here's the red power that goes back to the tender. And hopefully this works. This is that XL Systems decoder. And I got kind of high hopes for it. I, I mean, I really hope this thing works. And I'm, I don't know yet. I, I attempted to do a test and read the decoder. Nothing happened. We'll see if uh, now that we got all the wires hooked up, if that's going to work now. Let's do a test of our quartering abilities and part of our wiring setup. So, let me hold on to it. Let's see, hold on to it like this. Um, it may slip a little bit because there's no, it's not sitting on the rails, but does it work? I'm gonna have to say that's not bad. That everything is no binding. Um, it's pretty good. I'm starting to kind of like this thing. Now, the tricky part is going to be getting these these wires from the headlight into their pad, and then and then connected to the little board. And then over there is the tender. Checking his coupler height. He's looking good too. All right, now, here's uh, the front truck, and I already did this, but I didn't have a camera recording. It was not engaged. It was too short, and so the puller, I used the puller. This is a Northwest short line tool called the puller. All right, now, I told you not to use this on motor stuff, but on worm gears and steam on, on setting up steam engine axles for to to be engaged, this is a good tool, really good tool. So what I had done was this was way too close, and I put it in here. There's a little piece here. Okay, that you put that in here like this. Okay, and then you put your wheel in there, and you center the screw on it, and then you twist it. Now, it has an Allen wrench, which you would use for really tough stuff like worm gears. But for steam engine, for uh, setting wheels, you don't need to. You just twist it with your fingers, and you get it, just like that. Very good. This The Hudson has turned out really nice. All right, I finally got this XL Systems steam decoder working. And I did a little testing with the Hudson here, and I learned a few things. One, this whole thing is very lightweight, and it and the tender is super lightweight. Has trouble standing on the track because it's so light, and we have those disconnects in here to get power. It also did not like the 18-inch radius curve. I did fine on number six crossovers, and it did fine on 22. But I did not like the 18, and I think we might be able to fix that. We are going to load this thing down with as much lead weight as we possibly can. Um, the only weight that was in the locomotive is this, and it's 3.75 ounces. We are going to increase that to right around 6 ounces. This pile. Then, we're going to load this tender down and make it as heavy as we possibly can. We need way better contact. Um, so we got an LED light in here. That looks good. Here's our subwoofer that we made. Um, one of the things about... When there's power to this, this thing buzzes. 
a little bit. Um, so I'm going to double check this and make sure it's fully sealed. It'll add, add more weight so that buzzing doesn't carry over into the shell so much. And then we'll give it another try again. Um, but otherwise, it's, it's working. I have very high hopes for this decoder. I really hope it works. They're on sale. So if, if I get this thing working good, I'm going to get some diesel ones. We're going to try those. One of the things, though, this is an MRC decoder, basically. Excel Systems makes MRC. And MRC decoders are supposed to be programmed on the main sound decoders. So I had a little trouble programming this. Now, one, GMRI does not detect Excel Systems. It detects MRC, and it didn't detect the right one. I manually put it into the right one and programming from the interface in GMRI does some weird things to it it and using the programming track it always says it didn't write but then when I read it back it did write I'm gonna have to bring in a main uh, some piece of track that is is got mainline power to so I have it on the workbench to, to work with these. I did. I was able to program it though, but I had to go over to the DR5000 base station and use its programmer to write certain CVs, which will not show up in the JMRI list. On the base station, you can write any CV. You can read and write all CVs on there, regardless. But for the most part, I'm. I kind of like the sound. It sounds not bad. If this had a really, really good speaker, you know, it would be really, really sweet sound. So we'll do a little work on this. And then we should be good to go again. So we can finally wrap this up and you guys get to see it. All right, I've been troubleshooting this thing. And so we did have one bad decoder. When I isolated it, 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 uh, it had this buzzing sound and it would... Uh, immediately trip the breaker so I got that swapped out so it's a good decoder now our speaker sounds amazing compared to the, the stock one which I tested both but the motor this motor is junk and we went through all the trouble of tuning it up and everything but it's just it's just plain it's just junk just is so we're gonna have to put in a red one which means we've got to swap we've got to swap out the worm gear and that's where this guy comes in handy this guy is great for taking out a worm without, without uh, without uh, having to clamp onto it Okay, so now, now I need the wrench. Oh, the wrench is not over here anyways. So basically I'm gonna twist this, it's gonna pull the worm off, we'll put the worm on a rev one, and we'll put the bearing on there, and then we'll put that in here. And hopefully that solves all the problems. This thing is turning out to be one of the most troublesome locomotives I've ever had to do. Well, there it is. Rev one is steam engine. Actually the first steam engine to have one of these. One thing I worry about is that worm sits on the very end of the shaft, even in the old motor. The old motor, it was like crimped down or something. It uh, it, it took some effort and, and bent my tool a little bit before it came off. But it's on there. It does work. And checked everything for shorts now. It looks like everything is good to go. So now we're going to put it back together. We're going to try it again. All right, we made it. This, is, this has been one of the hardest and most time-consuming builds we've ever done here. So, I'm going to power it up. You're going to hear, this is the XL Systems uh, steam decoder. And I put the, the speaker is in the tender. The decoder is in the tender. I'm going to power it on. You're going to hear a buzz from the speaker. There is no way to get rid of that that I know of. It buzzes. 
Now, let me select it. That being said, we made a subwoofer out of this guy. Okay, I hear the buzz, but I also hear some one of the functions. There are so many sounds on this thing, it is unbelievable. Oh my goodness, and I've even got on my controller, I actually have, check this out. It tells me what they are now. Oh, I guess we are done. Okay, let's try all these sounds. There's like 28 sounds here. Okay, all right, let's try a, I don't want to show you the first one first. Let's just, whoa, what? I'm not ready for that yet. Okay, let's try coupling. Okay, all right, you ready to hear the real deal? That's a huge improvement over the original. Uh, putting that subwoofer in there with the with the speaker that it came with. Listen to that again. All right, we had to use a bunch of disconnects of this so it doesn't go around sharp curves. And this thing is meant to go, meant to pull passenger cars. It does not pull heavy trains. And so I've got these two, two out of our super heavyweight train here. It can pull these two guys, but it can't really pull a lot. So let's, uh, let's try it. Now, it's got the Rev1 motor, and that motor, um, I doubt this decoder was meant for a motor this accurate. So I, I've got the chuff as slow as I can get it. And, and well, you'll listen to it. Let's hear it. Wait, 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 wait. Well, hold on. Go over here. Okay. We're going to go way back here. I'm going to zoom in. Headlight works perfect. You can program this with JMRI. It is not easy, but you can do it. The headlight is on. All right, here we go then. It's got a rev one, so it's got excellent slow speed. I can't get the chuff slower though. The motor's too accurate for it to uh, make the chuff slower. Don't. Okay, here's the problem with this guy. The power pickup is terrible. And so right now, he's on track. He should be picking up power. But from one part, he's not. He hasn't tripped a breaker or nothing. It's just, if you're going to do this one, you got to plan it better. And the way to improve this is to make this tender, which right now is only picking up on one, two, three, four. Four axles. See, I just barely... I touched the cork and it came back on. It's only picking up from four axles. See that? If you made it so it picked up on all axles on both sides, you would improve this thing tremendously. See that? The chuff gets away out of control. It gets really, really... He doesn't have the greatest power pickup. Didn't trip a breaker. It just, it's not, it, it only has a little bit of power pickup here and a little bit over here. This picks up on one side only. See, that's, that's, uh, that chuff is way too fast, and I can't slow it down anymore. Now, I may, because you need the Revlon motor, it's, it's a little grindy in reverse, but it's pretty smooth and forward, and those two cars right there are actually really heavy.
See, when I go slow, this thing, because it's got a rev one, you can go super slow. Dang, that whistle sounds good. When I plug in the, uh, a regular speaker, the speaker you can plug in, it's got a disconnect on it. Okay, when I plug in the regular speaker, it doesn't sound like that at all. That, I gotta say, I love it. And they, there are so many options on this thing for different sounds. It's crazy. So I think we're going to call this one because it's working and I know it's only going to be really pulling passenger trains around a loop. I gotta give Excel Systems credit. These decoders only cost 35 bucks. And they're pretty they're cool. They got so many functions and stuff. I oh I wish they would they would work with 18 volts, but they don't. They only work with that. Well, I don't know. I, I'm not I don't dare try it. I don't dare try it. Because it says in there 18, less than 18, so I put it on 16. But the, 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 this thing is really super cool. And it, this thing has got, so you've got four light functions. You've got four functions, and just a, it takes up the entire list of stuff that of different kinds of sounds and stuff that are already on here. It's crazy. Crazy. This thing is... It is really cool. So we're going to call it. And... This train is going to a place where it's going to pull passenger trains around in a circle. And it's going to do just fine. It's got the Rev1 motor. And it's going to be excellent.